while it's great putting warheads on foreheads, you actually have to find those foreheads. So let's talk about navigation. Stingray is town six, you're cleared to engage. Lead is a rolling in, engaging south to north, left in, right out. The following video is for entertainment purposes only. There will be no specific discussion about ranges, technical data, or aircraft survivability equipment, otherwise known as ASE. Questions of this nature will not be answered, and discussions will be deleted. Thanks. Alright guys, let's talk about navigation, and I'll be honest with you, for, this always confused me in the air aircraft. Uh, it just seems kind of wanky, but uh, we'll, we'll fight through it together. Alright, so we're going to hit point down here, and first thing we're going to do is hit add. And we're going to hit waypoint. So it's going to default to waypoint one. That's fine. We're just going to hit enter over here on the keypad unless we want to change that. We'll just keep that as the same. Free, we can put in some text data uh, that could show up later, but we'll just skip that. We don't need that as well. And then it's immediately going to take us here to UTM lat long. And you can see it's already filled out a lot of data for us. It's filled out the 38 Tango Kilo mic. That's because that's where we are. Uh, so if we're trying to put this uh to a grid square that's well outside of these parameters you'd have to uh, manually move the cursor with the arrows and change that but you can see it's already populated that and it's got us our cursor here at the uh, first digit of the eight digit grid and you can see uh nine one eight seven seven three one seven so it's an eight digit grid uh, but we can go ahead and just type in whatever we want uh, we'll just leave that as a nine one eight uh what else is it seven seven three one seven okay all right so we're just gonna hit enter it's gonna immediately tell us that this is the altitude that it thinks that is at uh, as far as ground level, we could change that, of course, if we wanted to, but we'll just leave that inner. And now we've got our waypoint. So waypoint one is right there on top of us, and we can check the coordinate page and see on the waypoints that we have uh, 91877317, which is where it dropped. So that's the first technique of dropping a waypoint if you know the grid. All right, so the second technique, uh, once again, we're going to hit add. We're going to move our cursor, and we're just going to hit enter somewhere. And so now we can see that we've dropped uh, the next waypoint uh, that's in the queue uh, wherever we have that cursor at. So waypoint two is now there and we can then edit that uh, to change the grid. So again, if we had a grid that we know of or somebody's you know sending us a grid to refine something, uh, we can edit that. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that we've selected that grid or that waypoint. So we'll put our cursor over it, hit enter, and you can see we've got the inverse video and the data shows up here. We're going to hit edit and we're just going to start up here. We're going to hit uh, the uh, L1 button. That's going to, again, bring the keyboard to life. So it's asking for free text, anything that we want to put in there, some sort of note or something. Uh, we're just going to hit enter to leave that blank and it brings us right up here to this grid. So we can just say that maybe we made a mistake and that should have been a five. Uh, so we can just change that, hit enter, and then it's going to move the uh, waypoint once we hit altitude. Sorry about that. Then it's going to move the uh, waypoint over. As you can see, it kind of moved over a little bit to the right. And we can just double check that. And indeed, the 9.6 became a 9.5. All right, if we want to delete that waypoint, we just uh, select it, hit delete, and hit enter. Yes, and it's gone. All right, stow. Uh, this is to basically stow a point that we fly over. Um, so this can have some utility. Let's say that you're flying along and uh, you see something of interesting that you, you know, you fly over something that you want to keep note of a grid, or maybe you took fire from a location and you just need some sort of reference of where you are while you're trying to maneuver so you can get back into the fight. Uh, it's a little bit long-winded for all these scenarios that I'm spelling out, which is why uh, newer versions they created some different systems. But you've got this stow button here at L5. So if we hit stow and we hit now. Uh, it's going to drop a waypoint uh, right under us. So you can see waypoint 2, which we deleted. So now we have a new waypoint 2. is a waypoint, and it's called fly. So that's that free text in action. So that's a fly to waypoint. So that's something that we've dropped, and it lets us know uh, that we dropped that one on the fly. All right, so one thing that you're going to do for navigation uh, quite a bit is go up a direct waypoint. There's multiple ways to do this. First, we're going to go to the route page. And we are going to go over here on the left, L5 to direct, to D-I-R. So we click that. And multiple ways to do this. The easiest is just move your cursor over to wherever you want to go direct. Hit enter. 
and you can see this line appears. We'll leave the route menu. Let me pull up the waypoint data and you can see that waypoint one is 2.1 kilometers. That is where it wants us to go. Uh, alternatively, we can also use our CAC. So I'm going to go direct, move up to our CAC, hit enter. And now we are direct to our CAC, Tango 55, 7.1 kilometers. Now again, think about the power of this. If the CPG is uh, using the pan function, he's looking for areas to maneuver the aircraft to. He can cack it, set it up as a direct waypoint to target 56, and now you in the back seat know exactly where to go. All right, last way I'll show you how to set up a direct waypoint. We'll hit route, direct, point. We'll look over on our keyboard, and we're gonna put in whiskey 02, enter. And you can see that we've got the line taking us to waypoint 02, which is 8.1 kilometers away. All right, guys, so let's talk about routes. Uh, as you uh, know, in the mission editor, mission editor, we can build routes. So we've already got waypoints one and two built into a route. Uh, we'll go into the route page here at uh, B4, and you can see that we've got route alpha, it says, waypoint one, then two, then the end. I think this is kind of weird the way that it's written with the, the, the end being at the top, but you know, I, I don't work at Boeing. Uh, but we'll go to this button that appears once we go to the route menu. It's called the route uh, management. So we'll bring that up. We've got uh, different routes that we can populate. Now, I don't think that there's a way in current uh, DCS to create multiple routes uh, from the mission editor. So you're just going to have the one. So we'll go ahead and set up a second route here on route Bravo. And we'll leave the uh, management page here. And we can build a route, but we don't have any points. So let's go back over to the points. And we're just going to create a uh, quick set of points here. We'll add one, two, and three. All right, let's go back to route and we'll go ahead and add these routes. So we want to fly uh, in the order that we put them. So we'll select that and we're going to press the end and press it again. Select and press it again. Uh, but this obviously doesn't make a lot of sense because we said we wanted to take the route as we drop the points. But here, it looks like we're going to be starting at 5, 4, 3, and then the end. Uh, so we've made a mistake. We've done it wrong. The system is trying to screw with us. So we're going to hit delete, and we're going to delete all those points. And now we're going to put them in the way that we want. So we'll go back to add. And we said we wanted to start with 3. So we're going to select that and pop it in there. Now we're going to go to four, select that, and we're going to pop it in uh, between the three and the end. So we'll select five. And again, we want it here. So we're going to select the last one. So now we've got our route properly made waypoints three, four, five, and the end. We can go into the route manager and we can see that Bravo is indeed three, four, and five. And if we decided that we don't like that, we can just select that one and delete. All right, guys, so let's talk about the uh, navigation in uh, in flight and just a real quick kind of show how this uh, symbology works out for you. So uh, we are up to direct to waypoint zero one. That's 2.4 kilometers away. And you can see symbology wise, I'm in the hover mode. Uh, we don't have the uh, horizon line and we don't have some of the other information showing. But as you can see, looking around, we can't see the waypoint. But I'm going to go ahead and move my symbology to transition mode. And now we can see our flight path vector, some other information. But we can see down at the bottom left there, it says uh, Whiskey 01, uh, 2.1 kilometers. And our ground speed is 40 knots. And it's going to take us uh, 1 minute 38 seconds. And you can see that uh, uh, baseball diamond looking thing. That is our waypoint. So our flight to waypoint is waypoint 1. So I'm just going to put my flight path vector over the waypoint. Now, some of you might be noticing that the flight path vector is not uh, directly in front of the aircraft. That really has more to do with uh, the aerodynamics of helicopters and the Apache in general. Uh, it doesn't really fly in a straight line. It does have kind of this little uh, cant off to the right, uh, which is why we talk about being in trim, which we can see look down at the bottom of the high action display. Uh, the aircraft is in trim, uh, but we are not in what would you call a nose to tail trim. And we can uh, get nose to tail trim by putting in a little bit of right pedal and lining up that flight path vector lined up with the head tracker. And you can see that uh, line, that uh, velocity vector line 
uh, is running straight up in HDU. All right, so we're approaching waypoint one and it should auto change to waypoint two. And there it is. So now we've gone direct to waypoint two. Uh, that is because we've got that set up as a route. Now, if we just went direct to just some random point, uh, it's not gonna update anything. So let me move my cursor over here and we're going to hit CAC and we're just gonna CAC a spot off there. Make sure we don't run into anything. We're gonna go down to route, direct, and now we're up direct to that CAC and we are going to look for at off to our left. All right, so there's our uh, T55, 4.2 kilometers, ground speed, 68 knots, and climbing two minutes to the area. Now, one thing that would happen with a route is uh, we've kind of gone off route. If we wanted to rejoin our route, we could just go back to uh, direct to waypoint one. Once we hit one, it should pick up the active route and then it would take us uh, automatically to waypoint two. Now the good thing about having a second person in the cockpit is he can be messing with all of these uh, waypoints, putting us up direct, setting up routes while we're just outside, uh, flying the aircraft and looking for threats, such as this guy right over here. All right, so what can I say? Uh, the TSD is very powerful, but sometimes a very confusing tool. Um, all I can say is you got to play around with it. Even uh, when I was flying this thing in active duty, I still struggled a lot of times with the navigation, with the points and the route menus and all that stuff. So, so just kind of play around with it. Again, we'll uh, circle back and look at the BAM once the uh, FCR and longbow net uh, functionality is uh, created for the module. But right now, I think there's enough uh, enough meat on this bone uh, to keep you busy. Uh, particularly spend a lot of time playing with the CAC and uh, of course just building your, your waypoints. It takes a little bit of time just to kind of get that whole uh, uh, process of, of selecting the point, putting in the data that you want. Uh, but after a while you'll, you'll get it all figured out. Alright guys, I appreciate you guys watching and uh, yeah, we're out of here. We'll talk to you later.